Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala rahmatin lil alamin Wa man tabiya dinahu bil ihsan ila yawmiti Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And we ask him to send his peace and blessings Upon the mercy to this universe The final messenger Muhammad And to everybody who follows his way with righteousness Until the last day The topic I have chosen to discuss today is the issues related to entertainment in Islam. This topic is one that comes up with many of the young Muslims. They seem to have this understanding that having fun is not permitted for the believer. And this understanding is something which drives them away from practicing Islam as they begin to find Islam very constraining and difficult upon themselves. So what we will be looking at in this short video is some of the proofs as to what is the Islamic position towards entertainment which is halal, which is haram and what is recommended. We need to begin by first examining the attitude of people towards entertainment. Now among those who live a worldly life without any attachment to the religion their understanding of entertainment is that this is what life is all about. Many people live their lives for entertainment. They want to have fun and even though they work and they earn money, but that money is so that they can purchase more means of entertainment. If they have a television, they are working harder to buy a bigger television. If they have a car with a radio in it, they want to buy a radio with an mp3 player. If it has an mp3 player, they want to buy, buy a DVD player for the car. If they have the PlayStation 2, they want to buy the PlayStation 3. And so it's always about more, about getting more entertainment and enjoying life more. This is the attitude of those who are caught up in the dunya, uh, among the Muslims and the non-Muslims. And this is a very destructive attitude, as it, dis it dis distracts us from the purpose of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to primarily worship and obey Him. And if we are distracted 24 hours by making money and then using that money to have fun, what happens is that we now do not have time to worship Allah. And so you find people, when you tell them to join you for an Islamic project, their first excuse is, we don't have time. If they have time to watch 3 hours of movies every day and play 4 hours of video games every day, but they don't have 1 hour of the day to devote to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a very dangerous position to be in. It is these type of people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in the Quran, in Surah Takathur, when He says, Al-Hakumut Takathur Hatta Zurtumul Maqabir. The competition to gather the nice things in this world has distracted you until you visit the graves, meaning until you die. Kalla Sulfata'alamun. Then only would you come to know the reality. Definitely then only will you come to know the reality. Allah continues in the surah and He says that these people who spend their entire lives chasing after the dunya and now when they die, Allah says, لَتَرَوُنَّ jahim, They will see the hellfire with their own eyes. And on that day, يَوْمَ يَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ أَنِنْ نَعِيمٌ On that day, Allah will ask them about the good things He gave them in this world. What did they do with them? So it is very important for us that while we as humans want to have fun, we should not allow this to dis distract us from our purpose in life. We need to prioritize and realize that the purpose why Allah has created us is to worship Him. And so this should always be a priority. And so the idea of just having fun and enjoying life and making money, this is not an Islamic understanding of the world. The Islamic understanding, however, is not the opposite extreme. 
There are Muslims who go to the opposite extreme and say that we are here only to worship Allah so there is no such thing as entertainment and there is no such thing as having fun but this is a misunderstanding this is a wrong understanding of Islam and the correct attitude of a Muslim is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us upon the fitra He created us with natural inclinations towards good or evil and there is nothing in this religion which is against our fitra anything that is part of human nature is accommodated for in Islam and so too the human need for recreation is also accommodated and we find that Islam allows people to enjoy themselves but in ways that are wholesome in ways that are pure in ways that are halal if we look at the principles of fiqh one of the principles of fiqh when it comes to things of this world is that everything is permissible unless you have proof that it is prohibited everything is permissible unless you have proof that it is prohibited and this applies to forms of entertainment as well those forms of entertainment which are clearly prohibited in the Quran or in the Sunnah or by analogy these are the prohibited forms but everything else is permissible as long as they fulfill basic criteria now there is a narration that some people bring forth and they say that this narration prohibits all forms of entertainment except three there's two versions one says three one says four the narration is that all of the things of this world all of the recreation, recreational things of this world are batil are void uh, a waste of time except for three in one narration it says three the other says four and the Prophet ﷺ described them as archery horse riding and swimming and in the other narration the fourth one is added wrestling so some scholars based on this narration say that these four are the only permissible types of entertainment uh, in his Ihya Ulumuddin Imam Al-Ghazali rahimahullah, gives a very good response to this Imam Al-Ghazali mentions that just because these few are mentioned in one hadith does not necessarily mean other forms of all haram because there are many other narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahaba entertaining themselves in other ways not mentioned in this hadith the Prophet Sallallahu used to race with his wife on foot and they used to watch people play with the swords in the masjid and they used to have competitions with watermelon seeds and they used to do many other things some of the children used to play with toys and it goes on and on there were many things they used to do so this hadith is not limiting what is halal furthermore the word in this hadith is not haram the word is batil meaning that there is no reward in it if there is no reward in something that does not make it haram it still remains halal unless you have proof for it to be prohibited so, so the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that these forms of entertainment are rewarding if you, if you ride a horse if you train with the archery if you are swimming these are types which are rewarding because they are, keep you physically fit and energized and this is something which is good in Islam it does not necessarily mean that others are prohibited so we need to understand the primary principle is when it comes to entertainment everything is permissible unless you have proof for it to be prohibited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that you read the law bikum al yus wa la you read bikum al usr Allah wants things to be easy for you does not want to make things difficult for you and furthermore Allah says there is nothing in this religion which is a burden from among the other principles which govern the issues of entertainment besides the rule that everything is halal until proven haram they are certain things if they are found in an aspect of entertainment it becomes haram these things include number one including any element of haram so something might be halal in itself but the minute elements of haram get involved a person should stay away from it for example playing a, a sports like cricket or football soccer these type of things in itself it is halal but if playing it is going to make a person vulgar and abusive to his friends then such a person it is not permissible for him to play it even though it could be permissible for others so the first thing is that it should not lead to what is haram secondly it should not 
consume too much of our time. So if one is playing video games for 10 hours a day, or one is watching two or three movies a day, or one is watching cricket for five days in a row for six hours a day, this can become haram as you are now wasting time. And to waste our time is not permissible in Islam. We should do and have entertainment in ways which refresh us without consuming all our time. Two hours a day, three hours a day of entertainment is okay if you are spending the rest of your day in what is good in issues of ibadah and work and family time. But to let it consume your time, this is not permissible. Thirdly, it should not consume your resources. So somebody who is spending all their money on entertainment, this is not permissible. Money will be responsible for not only how we earned it, but also how we spend it. So, again, we need to balance our lifestyle and not be from those who Allah calls the musrifun, those who are wasteful when it comes to spending their money. So these are some of the conditions that could make something which is halal, haram. Now there are certain forms of entertainment which are completely prohibited in Islam uh, for the Quran and Sunnah. Anything involving intoxications, whether it's alcohol or drugs, is prohibited. Uh, anything involving or leading to zina is prohibited. So any, any such a place where people go to entertain themselves, which is a den of alcohol or zina or drugs, or nowadays you get places where you can find all of these things together, such places are prohibited for us to attend. Likewise, gambling, completely prohibited. Any form of entertainment which involves shirk is also prohibited. And many times Muslims don't realize when they are doing something for fun which actually involves shirk. You will hear Muslims playing a game and one Muslim will tell his friend that my character is omnipresent or my character lives for eternity. This is shirk. Only Allah has these qualities. So even to give these qualities to characters in a game is not permissible. Likewise, any form of entertainment which involves fortune telling is not permissible. And there are various other things. For example, when it comes to the issue of joking and comedy, there are many rules which regulate this in Islam. Islam is not against joking and comedy in itself. But the content needs to be clean. The content needs to be free from shirk. And the content must not be mocking Islam or the Muslims. Anything which is part of Islam cannot be mocked. Now if there is something Muslims do which is not Islamic and you are mocking it to show them that this is not Islamic, that is okay. But when you are mocking Islam, this is an act of kufr. So it is very important that for those Muslims involved in the field of entertainment uh, known as comedy to be very careful what they say. To study a bit deeper the fiqh of, com of, uh, of, of joking and to use this fiqh accordingly and to make the jokes accordingly so that they do not step onto this dangerous territory. Now there are other forms of entertainment which are recommended as in the hadith we mentioned about swimming, archery, horse riding, and, res and playing wrestling and other forms of physical martial arts. These types of things are recommended because they help keep the body fit. Likewise, spending time with your wife, spending time with your children. This is all recommended in Islam. In fact, at, at sometimes it even becomes obligatory upon a person to spend at least a minimal amount of time with their family members. So having fun together with your children and with your wife, these are things which Islam recommends. Take them out, go to a park, go and eat out together. These things are very much recommended as it helps to strengthen the unity of the family. Likewise, dealing with nature brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you enjoy visiting zoos and parks and places where there is a lot of nature and animals, Alhamdulillah, this is something which is good. Islamic songs are also something which is recommended according to some permissible according to others in my view it is something good which will chase take people away from the prohibited forms of music and likewise there are many other things when you study the Quran and Sunnah you will find in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ many ways that he and his companions used to have fun which are completely halal and if the Prophet peace be upon him recommended it 
then it becomes something which is recommended as well. Now, when it comes to the issues of entertainment, there are two main areas where we have a lot of questions. The first is in the issue of animations and drawings, and the second is the issue of music and musical instruments. So I want to focus primarily on these two topics for the remainder of the session. When it comes to animation, there are various opinions among the scholars. As Aisha radiallahu narrates hadith, where the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him prohibited the drawing of living creatures. But Aisha radiallahu herself also narrates that she used to play with dolls in the presence of the Prophet And one of these dolls also a horse with wings. And the Prophet Muhammad did not see anything wrong with her playing with these dolls. And so the scholars have deferred on this issue. Some scholars looking only at the first hadith have said that drawing of living creatures is completely prohibited. Other scholars trying to reconcile between both hadith have come to various opinions. The two most common opinions are that either drawings are permissible unless they lead to glorification or shirk or the more common and the stronger opinion is that drawings are prohibited unless they are for entertainment and education of children. So any form of drawing or depiction of living creatures which is for the entertainment of children or for educational purposes, just many of the scholars have ruled that these are permissible. And so children's toys, animated movies, these sort of things based on this will be permissible. Now obviously then the issue comes about content and when it comes to animation even these days many of the animated movies produced uh, by non-Muslims many of them have content which is questionable for Muslims to watch and so parents need to screen the type of animation they allow their children to watch something which they themselves have went through first to make sure there is nothing in it which will take the children away from Islam and that the content is clean and then allow them to watch it. While this is going on, it is very important for Muslims who have access to making media and to producing uh, videos, such Muslims should focus on producing animated movies for Muslim children which have Islamic content. Alhamdulillah, this is something which is happening nowadays and it is something where there is a lot of room for growth and expansion. This will become an alternative for the children so that they do not get involved in the types of movies and entertainment which are prohibited. Some people might say that television in, in itself is prohibited, but this is not the correct opinion. The correct opinion is it depends on the content. If somebody is watching this video, there is absolutely nothing wrong with watching such a video as the content is Islamic. Yet if someone is watching a video which has haram elements in it, then that is not permissible. So one has to look at the content of the specific video to declare whether it is permissible or not. The television and videos are in themselves tools, and the tools are halal. What they are used for, what you view on them, that makes it halal or haram. And the same ruling applies to animated movies. So from the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, scholars have, de have, de have deduced that children's toys are permissible, animated movies for children are permissible, animated books for children are permissible. This is one of the opinions of scholars. Yes, some scholars do disagree with this. There is no doubt about that. This is the opinion that I follow and Allah knows best. The other issue which props up most often when it comes to entertainment is the issue of music. And we have one group of Muslims who are saying that music is completely prohibited, there's no two ways about it. And we have another group of Muslims saying music is completely permissible and those who say it is prohibited are extremists. Both of these groups have not understood the nature of fiqh when it comes to the issue of music. Imam Ash-Shawqani has written a very good book on this topic called Ibtal Da'watul Ijim. This book is available in Arabic, it has not been translated into English yet. In this book, Imam ash mentions something very interesting, a very different approach to this debate than many of us have today. He says that I have never listened to music in my life. And he says 
that I believe musical instruments are prohibited. But I am writing this book and showing all the different viewpoints with their arguments so people can understand that there is difference of opinion on this issue and so that we can tolerate each other's opinions and not accuse our Muslim brothers of kufr and deviation. That's a very important point when it comes to this issue. That there is a difference of opinion here and if somebody is convinced of a different opinion from you that does not make them a disbeliever, that does not make them a deviant rather this is an issue of fiqh which the scholars have deferred over. If you look at the mazhabs, the Hanafi mazhab ruled that all musical instruments are prohibited even the tapping of your finger on the desk or on the table to make noise this is prohibited according to the Hanafi mazhab. The Hanbali mazhab is of the view that the hand drum the duff is permissible. They differ over whether it is permissible only for women and only on special occasions or if it is permissible for everyone. The Maliki Madhab, if you study it carefully, is of the view that drums are permissible. It is of the view that drums are permissible. As in any Maliki book of fiqh which I have read, whenever it talks about the prohibition of music, it only mentions wind and string instruments. And from the scholars have mentioned that drums are permissible according to that madhab. And the Dohiri madhab, the madhab of Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, was that all musical instruments are permissible. So these views all exist among the madhabs. And nobody can deny that they existed amongst the madhabs. And so it is for the scholars to study the different evidences and to follow that which their study has led them to believe is the most correct conclusion. And if that conclusion is different from yours or mine's, it, we must tolerate it and accept it as a difference of opinion. Nonetheless, for the average Muslim who does not have knowledge of fiqh and the principles of fiqh and the ability to decide between the mazhabs, in these issues, it is always better to stay on the safe side and to follow the majority opinion and to follow the strongest opinions. Uh, so, when it comes to the prohibition of musical instruments, the majority of mazhabs all agree that wind instinct instruments are prohibited, even though Ibn Hazm and Imam Ghazali and a few others disagreed with them, but the majority said it is prohibited. And so to be on the safe side, the average Muslim who, does not, who has not been able to research this issue should stay away from such instruments and songs which include such instruments for their own safety, as this is now a grey area. While those, the other issue of the drums and the duff is something where there is a lot more differences of opinion among the scholars. There is a much bigger difference of opinion amongst them. And as a result, on such issues, you know, uh, there is some, a lot more room for differences. So this is an area of difference of opinion among the scholars, musical instruments, whether they are prohibited or, pro or permissible. And accordingly, every scholar and those who follow a specific scholar have the right to follow what the ijtihad has led them to, even if it is a different conclusion from you or I. Uh, now, linking this to the issue of animation and movies, somebody would ask that I believe and I follow the opinion that musical instruments are prohibited, but the animated movies and the other movies have a lot of background music in them. Can I watch these movies while ignoring the music? And we go back to a fatwa of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah who mentioned that just like hearing the Qur'an is not rewarding, you have to listen to the Qur'an to receive the reward. Similarly, hearing music is not sinful, you have to listen to the music for it to be sinful. And so if you are in a place where the music played in the background and you are not paying attention to it, you are not sinful for it. Likewise, if you are watching a program on television where there is music in the background and you are not paying attention to the music, then Allah knows best, but that would be, in my opinion, permissible. And for those Muslims who are involved in media, who are involved in producing animated movies or in producing documentaries or any other type of Islamic media, my recommendation to you is even if you are of the opinion that instruments are permissible, you should not include them in your videos. The reason for this is that you are trying to reach out to the Muslims. When you include music in your videos, 
the majority of Muslims or at least 50% of the Muslims are not going to watch that video because there is music in it. And so you are now alienating a portion of the Ummah from receiving your message. So if your purpose of making that video was that as many Muslims as possible watch it they benefit from it, it will be better to avoid those instruments which most Muslims regard as prohibited, even if your personal opinion is that it is permissible. So for the sake of benefiting the Ummah in general, it is better even for those who view it as permissible to stay away from it. So these are some of the issues of entertainment which crop up the issue of music and animation are perhaps two of the more common areas in which we have questions. Another area where there is a lot of questions is when it comes to games. Two types of games, board games and video games. And the ruling for both is the same. The ruling for both is that the content will make it permissible or prohibited. Those board games which are generally for gambling, used for gambling, uh, will not be permissible if you are doing them for gambling. If you are playing those same games without any gambling involved, then too the scholars have ruled it to be makru, disliked, as it is one of those things that lead to gambling. So it is better to stay away from such games. One of the games that pops up often is the issue of playing the game of chess. And many scholars have ruled chess to be haram, while others have ruled it to be permissible. From my study of the evidences and the arguments used, I honestly believe that the playing of chess is permissible with the conditions I mentioned earlier that it does not consume too much of your time and it does not lead to other prohibited things and etc. whatever I had mentioned earlier as being the conditions for a form of entertainment to be permissible. In my view this applies to the game of chess as well. In itself it seems to be a harmless game to me and the evidences that I have seen against it are either weak or mistranslated or even at times misunderstood. For example, in one of the books of Fiqh, one of the scholars of the Mazhab said that there is no good in chess. And so some scholars took this as a prohibition of chess. While the wordings of this statement is not saying it's haram, it's just saying there's no reward in it. So that doesn't necessarily make it haram. He's just saying there's no good, there's no reward in it. So Allah knows best. My opinion is that the game of chess is permissible. When it comes to video games, again, the content is what matters. And it should not be addictive. It should not consume too much of your time, or too much of your, your wealth and resources, or lead you to do anything haram. So all of this needs to apply. So such a video game which, ful which fulfills these conditions, uh, a game which has clean content and you yourself do not play too much of it in that it consumes your time and you are not spending too much of your money on it in that you have not spent money on what is more important then Allah knows best but such games in my opinion would be permissible with these conditions and Allah knows best I'd like to conclude this short discussion by mentioning that the times we are living in, entertainment is everywhere. And we as Muslims, if we want our children and the young Muslims to be safe from the various forms of vulgar and uh, sexually prov provocative entertainment that is out there, we need to start providing alternatives for them. We need to start producing Islamic media. We need more Islamic songs, Islamic movies, Islamic animations, Islamic games, all of this needs to be produced as an alternative, as a wholesome alternative for the young Muslims so that they do not have to turn to other people and other sources when they want to have fun. They have good and wholesome fun available to them. Likewise, the masjids need to open up and allow for youngsters to have fun at the masjids, build a sports center at the masjid or in the sister section a lounge where they can sit and talk about things which are permissible and have some fun you know maybe build swimming pool whatever is within the budget of the masjid but create these recreational facilities for the Muslims because if we don't provide alternatives they by their nature especially those who are young by our nature we want to have fun 
And if the alternatives are not there, then people will turn to the haram sources for fun. So it is very, very important that we as a Ummah start working towards producing these halal forms of entertainment. And it is very important that we make this a priority to produce alternative halal media for the Muslim youth and halal forms of recreational for them. And ask Allah to make it easy for us to practice our religion, to understand our religion correctly, and to enjoy what Allah has made halal in this world in a way that it does not cause us to forget Him and to forget our purpose of life. Anything I said that is wrong is from my own side and from shaitan. Everything which I said that is correct is from Allah. And ask Allah to make this uh, uh, addition to our scale of good deeds on the last day. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ